Hey guys, welcome back to Chat with Charlie. Today for our special guest, uh, my favorite expat from America, now living in Sweden, we have Petra Vita. So say hello to everyone. Hello, hello. There you go, you got the wine out and I'm I've got- glad a to be here. <laughs> bottle of Desperado, so uh, we're all good. Um, we were saying before though, um, some of you guys will notice, especially if uh, you're familiar with me, I'm a big fan of making sure, you know, merch is all good. Um, right. On your head, you have mm -hmm. a little pineapple. So uh, let me tell us about the uh, the pineapple pine the pineapple cap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this one, uh, I've got a red one back there. That's actually my merch. This was just a fun. So uh, all right, this the pineapple thing. Um, within the last couple of years, but going back to this started like you know, 2012, 13. Mm. I had like the very like Macklemore haircut and it looked like more and more like a pineapple over time and I would kind of like style it in funny ways and stuff and it became a little bit of a of a of a meme on my Twitch streams and just as a brand and so I kind of ran with it and started making some graphics for my brand and stuff that were based around pineapples and as soon as that happened, you know, it was like the thing where, like, you know, someone hears their relative, like, oh, he's collecting baseball cards now. And so, like, every or like, he's into a new thing. So, like, everyone gets him that. Yeah. So, all of a sudden, it was, like, all these pineapple gifts like this. My mom got me a couple of years ago. It was, like, a random mm. Christmas gift. Like, oh, he's been wearing some baseball caps. Here's a pineapple dad cap. This year, I uh, or late last year, I launched my own merch. That's the the poster back there is is part of. That's the actual kind of style. And then the towel, which is there's like a banner on the wall back there. That was my my girlfriend's mom. Same thing. She yeah. was like, eh, I I just couldn't leave it alone. I saw all these pineapple things and I bought them for you. So, uh, yeah, the pineapple. It's a it ingrained part of the brand now for sure. Yeah, that's that's good though because. Um... Especially like, you know, I mean, you'll be the same when you see all and the, the mug, artists. the mug as well. You gotta give it to the mug. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, you can almost say the mic's getting onto the pineapple theme. All you have to do is add a little, uh, little leafy bit at the top and then your mic is. On yeah, this. I really should actually. That'd, that'd, be, be, cool. that'd be a good shout. But, um, a lot of our sort of, I think artist identity is always important. And, um, mm -hmm. funny if it's a topic that's come up a few times on uh, this podcast, but when it comes to like a brand and a brand image. Brandon here has a sick brand, yes. so I'm going to yeah, yeah. for that. Um, Did you just dox me? You just <laughs> yeah, hit him dox. with the with the real <laughs> first with the, name. With a real first name, but yeah, like again, like I've always been, I've always been a fan of merch. You know, I mean, I've got mm. the sticker here. If you're not watching the video, we've got the Charlie J stickers. Right. We've got the, the Charlie J T-shirts. It's the same with you. You know, I've, yeah. I've seen before. You got like the mug, the mug coasters and things like that, mm -hmm. and. Um, I think especially in this day and age when you can manipulate streams, you can manipulate um, numbers of views, followers. I think when you got someone like you who has merch and sells merch, as far mm. as I know, you sell merch. You've yeah, got yeah. merch and you sell it. That is a, such a good good way of showing that, you know, you've got real fans. So, you know, how did you come to building yeah. real fans? I think, you know, um, it's interesting you mentioned like manipulating numbers and stuff because I th think we've all seen and tried the kind of mm. uh so let's talk about like first of all spotify monthly listeners right that's like such a standard metric for so many artists these days of like oh are they big or are they not or what and you go and look at how many monthly listeners do they have on spotify and i think i i realized you know a few years back what what you did as well that mm. Um, you know, there's so many people where you, and we can get into the, how this ends up going down later, if you want to talk about this kind of stuff, but you know, there's so, it's so fickle, those types of numbers that you can be on a playlist because some random person found your song or because you paid someone a few dollars to find your song and put it on a playlist and you can look like you're 10 times as big as you are for two weeks and then be exactly where you were before and stuff. And I think part of building, you know, real fans and brand identity for me was wanting to take more kind of real tangible steps that can really only be a fan of hard work. Like, I don't know, unless you're a billionaire, you're not going to be able to pay someone to be a real fan every day. Like, always be posting about you or actually care about your music or decide they want to buy a hoodie or, or whatever mm. it is. And so, um, you know, I don't have any kind of huge fan base, but I'm really proud of the people that I have that do listen to my music, that do send me messages about the music. 
Um, and one of the things I think ha that has helped me with that is to be really intentional about um, uh, being appreciative and building them on a one-by-one -one basis. You can have big ambitions of big numbers and lots of people in the crowd or many fans or all these things, um, but at the end of the day, the most powerful thing, if we think about like how we learn about music, it's like when I yeah. tweeted uh, before about looking for music recommendations and you replied and stuff. It's a one-to-one -one recommendation from someone that you already have a relationship with mm. carries way more weight than the biggest budget ad spend or like promotion that you could run out of the blue and be another random person asking a stranger to to care about you and so when you have like a real one by like one-on-one -on -one connection with people um i think that really like strengthens your potential path to success so for me it's a lot about you know you know that i spend a kind of a disproportionate amount of time doing twitch streams every week even if mm -hmm. i don't have huge fewer numbers there it's important to me to have like people come in the chat they talk to me i can talk right back to them they can say something about a song i can be like ha here's a funny story about that song it wasn't even going to be called that or whatever and then like yeah. they have that conversation with with an artist and it doesn't feel so so distant so you know we'll see how things work out as as time goes on but for me it's still quite a kind of core tenet of acquiring fans to um just be realistic about each fan being a one-on-one -on -one person and giving people the attention that they would expect if you had a normal one-on-one -on -one relationship with them 100 percent. and yeah uh, i always say you know, when it comes to you uh building community has always been something i've i've always mm. looked and seen like I think that's how I actually met you was um, right. was another producer who used to be part of the Discord page you have, which is called The Porch. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he he invited me and that's how I, how I met you. And you sort of cultivated this community of yeah. music producers, like-minded artists, just to sort of not only chat about music and your music, but also have the mm -hmm. place to express themselves and be themselves and almost feel part of a yeah. family. Um, right. I, th I think that's something you've done really well. I think that is something you've done yeah. brilliantly and also rap like Stockholm as well. Thanks. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, creating a platform for other artists to come on. Um, I've got to give it to you for that. So again, yeah. like, when Thank it comes you. to like consistency, I mean, you're on Twitch, like what, three, five times a week. It's like, at least yeah, usually day. four or five days a week. I'm considering as live shows come back and start to be a possibility in the next mm. several months, uh, going back to a, four night a week mm. schedule and then making sure because it's very easy especially in the last year and a half with like everyone being inside all the time and like i'm not feeling as much connection and not doing live shows yeah it's very it's been very easy the last 18 months to feel like um someone who's uh like i'm a twitch streamer who also raps rather than a rapper who uses twitch as a community building tool and like that, yeah. that it's like side and so i want to make sure that my focus is where i think it should be and that i like most and so uh yeah i think i'll probably right now it's four to five and i think i will probably solidify it around five as uh, or sorry around four as things mm -hmm. go forward um and and have those nights that i that i'm pretty 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 dang consistent uh, on twitch yeah yeah because it's it's weird it's like I think we're all familiar with like people watching regular episodes of TV and getting attached mm -hmm. and connected. So I'm not sure how big it is over where you are, but Love Island in the UK at the moment is pretty damn big. Um, I've never actually watched an episode myself. I'm sorry if you. No, I just see I just see meme clips on like TikTok and stuff, and like yeah. <laughs> basically is, is what I see is like certain moments or headlines. So. But, I know it's big, but I don't I don't know much about it. And I feel somebody having that to come back to like every night they've got an update and they sort of get absorbed mm. in it. And um, how how often does it air? I think it is most nights. I, I mean, I'm not that's sure. That's crazy to me. Like to not be like you know we think of like I don't know like us growing up. I always think of like TV, you know, like a once a week episode of yeah. something. So that's pretty nutty if it, if it is like that. But it's the same with like we have like like soap operas, so we call them soaps, like Emmerdale and Coronation. That's Street. true. That's I mean, true. Because yeah. you were you were over here for a little bit as well, weren't you? You were in um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cheltenham. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was about a year and a half, a little more uh, in Cheltenham. Yeah, so mm-hmm. like, um, I don't know how familiar you are with the sort of UK TV culture, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> not not with soaps, but I actually really fell in love with like um, UK like humor and quiz shows and talk shows and stuff. And yeah. actually, I don't know, like I find I, I find it ridiculously entertaining. I think for me as well, like moving from the US, mm. US TV so often, especially like talk shows that are supposed to be consumed by like the the average Joe, like watching after work or whatever yeah they're so sanitized and tame and like mm. like oh no one's gonna swear and like do whatever so i think when i came over and i'm i'm watching like you know some shit happen on on countdown or jimmy carr say some or some shit where i'm like wow that's kind of all right you can't say that <laughs> yeah. on us TV. i was like i was yeah. like all right i appreciate that like i i like that there's a little a little bit of bite to it <laughs> yeah yeah we do have that i like that with um when you have like live at the Apollo on over here as well, um, mm. you get some, you can get some good sort of good comedy. The UK's got good comedy. I will say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, my, my heart is, st- you know, I'm born in Australia. Um, you know, the Olympics are on right now. I am supporting Australia right. guys. I'm, I'm sorry about that. If you think, Dude, can we, can we talk about something right now? Oh God. I say this, I'm not going to wave it around because I don't have my Swedish passport in here. I finally like put it away because I wasn't talking Ooh. about that shit on stream. But I got my Swedish citizenship this year after living go. here like five and a half years. This is back in like late February, early March. Mm. And um, today, I, it was dope. I was watching with uh, my girlfriend is on. She's on a hiking trip with her dad for like 12 days now. And this afternoon was our last time hanging out before she, she took off. Um, so that was just a few hours ago, and we were watching the discus throw, yeah. and Sweden took silver. Okay, I don't know. Some big explosion just happened outside. Like I think oh. it's fireworks. I don't know. Sweden's pretty safe, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I think I think we're fine. Uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> they took silver and gold in discus nice. in the Olympics for a country of barely 10 million people i was like all right i gotta i gotta flex a little bit of pride here i, I can't only root for the u.s when i'm sitting yeah. there with, with my girlfriend and i just got my my citizenship this year so that was pretty cool to see yeah that that, that, that that's sick that's it's always it's always good i mean it's a bit it's a bit different with um australia and the uk because like medals wise we're a bit closer normally it's not like us like us normally mm. gets loads of medals right I mean, right yeah much. Like, i think we're like I think Australia is like the place ahead of the UK at the moment. There's like one okay, gold medal yeah. between them, so it's very close. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm always going with my heart, like you know. Um, but that's also another interesting point because, you know, both of us have moved around a lot. So how have you found it being, yeah. you know, originally from America, moving to, well, the UK and now Sweden with especially mm-hmm. music? How have you found people have accepted you? That's. Interesting. I think it's got so many pluses and minuses and it's uh, like it's a little bit diluted. I think, um, you know, like for for me personally, I'm just forever thankful for it. You get so much more perspective and you meet just new people that you never would have. You figure out that your normal is not normal somewhere else. And you yeah. and that's that's very cool to me. I've always really liked that. Um, and sometimes when it comes to music there's an advantage to it for example performing um as an american i even remember in in england for example just you know from from the accent people you you stand out easier yeah um and you're like okay why is you know this guy in some small college town you know rapping and he's american or like same thing in sweden like okay this is interesting that he's here so you stand out that way however there is a little bit of kind of diluting that goes on where you it can be hard to find an identity that digs down into a niche that works, I've found. So, for example, you want to make references. Am I making... Am I calling something what it would be called from the U.S.? Or what it was called when I started doing music in England because they have a different word for it. Or am I saying fuck that all together and there's some Swedish slang that Mm. is actually used for that same thing. And that's a little tough because it's like almost like no matter what you do. Like for me, I love having connections and I want to connect with as many people as possible. And you end up 
risking not connecting with anyone in the same way as kind of they might feel about a you know kind of hometown hero or someone that they're they're closer with because you 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 just you just can't you're it's really hard to not build up your music or or your lyrics your everything you're doing with mm-hmm. little sprinkles of everywhere you've been and everything that's kind of made you who you are but at the same time you kind of risk like okay people from nowhere are going to understand every reference or get everything that's mm. in the song so i don't know i i don't know if i have found a good balance or if i will or what but that's definitely something i i think about a lot or or yeah. um like struggle a, w- a little bit with yeah no i was gonna I, I so i completely agree with you there it is it's interesting as well because like you said about the ho- hometown hero when people feel mm-hmm. they can relate to someone they you know, even as a person, as an identity, like they sometimes form a better connection with them. So mm. I've, I, I'm like you, I moved around a lot. So um, I'm in Wales right now. Um, and if somebody's living in Wales and they've lived in Wales their whole right. life, you know, and then suddenly I'm telling my stories about how I've lived in Lancashire or Australia or even, you know, mm. some of the other things about me, you know, I don't, don't have like a normal family, like, well, normal Mm -hmm. as in what society deemed as normal ages ago um yeah right if i'm rapping about having two moms or something okay Mm -hmm. people can say it's cool it's interesting but can they can they relate to that as well exactly that and that is an interesting line right between the like cool or interesting and the relatable and how both of those function in like long-term connections yeah because i i completely get, get what you're saying where it's like that's something that may be something that sticks out and people remember but how does that play into a long-term relationship as a fan of you know like it's a little bit of the like liking one thing that comes from an artist versus being a fan of all their you know their body of work or or something like that yeah 100 percent. it's it almost goes to sort of like like my fan base i'm not sure if it's the same with you It, it is almost split a little bit and i suppose there are other people who just sort of like the entertainment side of it and then there's the people who sort of feel connected Mm. Because, like, when I'm listening to music, there'll be music that I can sort of listen to and I just chuck it on and enjoy it. You know, I don't think too much about it. Um, right. Like, if I'm in the gym, for example, and I'm just putting on, say, like, uh, a little bit of, like, drill or something, you know, I might, mm-hmm. like, check out Unknown T's new album or something. I'm not going to... Chances are, like... Um, I'm, I'm, You're not, like, trying some... to find out where every show and things are like... Yeah, and it might not be released. something yeah. I, I really connect to because, um, you know, I'm not going to pretend mm. that I live the same life as Unknown T. <laughs> you, you sure. know what I mean, but yeah, um, yeah. if I'm listening to say Loyal Karna, or if I'm listening to say like even across the you know across the pond in America, if I'm listening to someone like Mac Miller, um, mm-hmm. and I can sort of you know feel a bit more of an emotional connection to this artist, then sure. um, maybe that's more like you just feel a bit more connected to him and like almost follow the yeah. journey. So, but yeah, I think. Um... One thing I've been working on a little bit that's, uh, I think, relevant to this discussion mm. is, uh, especially when we come to things like um, maybe political, societal, different breaks between people, how we categorize ourselves, what we fight over, what we agree on and things. One thing I've I've come to think a lot about these, these last few years is um, there is a um what i think of as like a a a common ground between basically you and every single other person even the people you hate or don't agree with or or whatever there is somewhere in that spectrum a degree of some people it's very easy to find common ground some people it's not at all and you really have to look for it but one thing that kind of thinking about that concept has made me realize or, or think about is it seems like there is probably a way you don't you don't want to be a yes man to everyone. But when you there probably is a way to connect with more people than we think. And I think this comes a little bit back to the one to one connections with with fans and making fans. I'll give you an example I know of a couple people, and um, I would never name them, and I never will, mm. who their first touch point with me was negative, and I could have, 
I th- I remember us something about this a while back coming up and and uh, not you and me having something negative, but you yeah. hearing me talk about this and and mm. and chiming in and basically where my first touch point was negative um, and they for okay I'll give you an example I remember someone who spammed me with something really sleazy about their music some bullshit about mine i could just tell it was copy pasted i wasn't having a good day and i was like i don't like th- this is shit I, d- I don't want some person pretending they've listened to it or they're whatever i yeah. and i remember going off on a rant in my reply rather than just blocking them but i did it in a way that was trying to still come from a place of understanding why and I remember literally telling this person the equivalent, long story short, of telling them you can do better instead of just like your shit and I don't want to hear from you ever again. Mm. Being like, look, like everyone sees through this. No one thinks this is actually personal. Um, yeah. I'm sure you have plenty of good qualities, but like this, sh- this shit isn't good. Like, I hope you are better. And even their first response was pretty understandably like defensive and not nice. And then eventually we kind of like became friends and they even sent me a message of being like, Hey, like, thanks for calling me out on that. Like I've started mm. being a little bit different and how I approach people. And that's hard. I think, you know, we talk about how much do you want to deal with? Right. Cause, mm. because this concept applies to things even as as deeply problematic as racism that people aren't born that way uh they they learn things and i would say sitting here is you know this the straight white male Mm. it's not my place to tell anyone what they should or shouldn't put up with you know like like Mm. i'm not gonna tell a person of color that someone can be deprogrammed because it's not really it's not their responsibility to do it but i can say that it's possible and i guess that that concept is just that every there is some weird way to find common ground with most people and um i don't know for me that's it's a big part of the the philosophy that i try and operate on if i have the energy for it i understand that everyone doesn't and and all the time and everyone's experiencing different things but when you can if you have a the only way that people kind of unlearn things mm. that are negative is having them deconstructed in uh, a way that requires some compassion, even where it might not be deserved or or earned. Yeah, um, which is I, 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 interesting. I, I, I kind of feel that it's. Um, I remember once I put up a snippet of a uh, of a track that I actually never mm. released, and it mm-hmm. was a style that was different from what I tend to do. And it, for some odd reason, this is back when Instagram was showing stories on the Explore page, which mm-hmm. was a bit strange. Okay. And some guy found it on the Explore page, and he sent me mm-hmm. like an angry, like an angry message. Did you say how, it was shit or something? Yeah, and it was like <laughs> I've first, had this experience too. <laughs> yeah, go and ahead. I'm a bit like, this is a bit strange. And we actually uh-huh. had a couple of mutuals as well. Yeah. So I said, oh, I think he even said something like it ruined his day. I thought I was a bit, bit too yeah. much, and I'm like. Yeah. Yeah, I said, look, I'm, I'm, I apologize about that. I was trying something new, um, mm-hmm. and that was it. Like, really, that's all I said, you know, hopefully, mm-hmm. whatever. And and then he sort of came back after that, and he said, oh, sorry, I didn't mean it like that, you know, uh, because I was, just, I was right. just honest. I was trying something new. I just wanted to see what people thought. And... Um, he was like, "Yeah, um, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. I've had a bad day, whatever." Mm-hmm. And um, I think he did come back later when I released another song, and he, he did like it. But mm-hmm. I think that was the thing you got to, you know, especially as an artist, we do become a almost a target for people to yes unload their energy, you know, whether that's positive energy or negative energy. You know, it's you, you become a public figure in a sense, and people can be like, "Right, okay, here's somebody I can offload to." And it's not always a re- direct. It's like you were sort of saying. I think it was like it's not really a reflection of you as an artist. Nope. It's a reflection of them as a person. In fact, I'll be, I'll, like I would go a step further and say mm. it is borderline never a reflection uh, mm. of you. I mean, it is very rare that that is. Gen- it's 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 basically what you're talking about. And I know we're so used to like picking teams and 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 butting heads and especially in public forums and on social media but one thing like 
if you take a conversation private with someone who, for example, leaves a negative comment on your page rather than, like, responding publicly, it kind of takes the, I don't know, like, the need to puff out your chest and, like, just be right mm. a little bit out of it. And I've had several conversations really akin to what you're talking about where mm. someone leaves something and I literally hit them up with a DM and I was like, it's almost like kill them with kindness because I know what I'm doing is a little bit like cheeky, like a little bit passive yeah. aggressive, but I also understand it's better than like getting mad. And I will literally send them like someone leaves something like, yo, this is dumb. Like quit now or whatever. And you send them a DM and you're, and you're like, Hey man, like I know whenever I've been in a place where I've left a comment like that, it's usually about something I'm not happy with or, like, I'm at a place where something not so great is going on. Mm. Like, uh, I don't take this personally, but if you need to talk or, like, whatever's going on, like, you know, feel free to let me know in, in DMs. Yeah. And it just deflates, right? It, in yeah. a good way or a bad way, it takes the wind out of the sails because they're, mm. They're either going to stay angry, but they know they're not going to get the satisfaction out of, like, continuing to try and knock you down a rung because, like, you're mm. you're taking this, like, in route where you're going to be overly analytical with it. Or it's positive and they kind of break down early and are just like, yeah, man, I'm sorry, that was kind of harsh. And, like, as soon as there's just a little bit of of conceding on both sides... Mm. It's, it it becomes an actual maybe useful conversation and people like s say real things instead of just like trying to one up or like I, I don't know you you it's, get to the core of things so it's it's it's, it's always interesting though because when you really like think about it and you really deep it when mm. when it, when a person sends a hateful message like that about right. music that they've never heard before they've never had a right. connection before but realistically that's you can you think about it like you know mm -hmm. I, I think i've never listened to a song and it's been so terrible that i've got to mm -hmm. write an angry message like the only, right the only time that a song will ever and would it ever annoy me that much would either be a i've heard it absolutely everywhere and it's starting to get on my nerves but by the point mm -hmm. that person's already probably famous so it's never someone starting out um yeah or like, i'm no i'm not someone to write angry comments anyway but or yeah. B, it reminds you of someone who's done something bad to you. Um, mm. So, right, um, th that song was when the party's over at one point for me because my ex adored that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when James Blake did the cover of it, though, it's beautiful, so I can appreciate it now. Mm. Um, but it's again, it's never a reflection of the music itself. No one has ever made. Yeah. I don't believe anyway that anyone's ever made music. It doesn't music. mean that people don't make and post not great music or music that a yeah. lot of people the market overall is is not going to respond well to but i just think nobody who is happy with what they're doing and is focused on putting their time into like what's best for them and building is is going to be the person taking the time to leave a comment tearing someone else down yeah like for me there's no good there's no good day where i feel like that's a good use of time Exactly. You, you you know what I mean? Like it's mm. just not. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. It's not where you, it's not what you do when you're in a good place. No. Well, say so speaking of uh, good though. So you recently released mm. uh, an EP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pineapple okay. Pantry. Okay. There we go. <laughs> it's a bit smooth, wasn't it? Oh but, uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah. So tell me more. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to sort of go about the process of that because um, some sure. of the people here may not know, but um, Bri Brian, who was the guy who mixed my EP um mm -hmm. middle times yes obviously he spoke to you about working on that at some point as well am i mm -hmm. am i right thinking that so i just want to know more about the sort yeah, of yeah, spoke to the origins yeah. and the the creation of the the project as well so yeah so that um this was actually kind of a pretty cool or like thing for me a little bit of evolution of you know you you've been producing longer than i have and mm -hmm. i love i love rapping and vocals and i've starting out of necessity just money wise yeah been mixing my own stuff for a long time but the production i didn't really have you know much skin in that game and and i didn't take that dive that was kind of a like a like okay a covid stuck inside goal over the last year and a half was like all right let's let's delve into this a little bit more there are tons of talented people there will be lots of songs that i do mm -hmm. that are not produced by me 
but at least being able to get a basic skeleton of like, okay, this idea comes to mind that I think will be cool. How do I put some framework to that together in Ableton or whatever you like to use? Um, is that would be a good step for my process. Mm. And kind of, I'd wanted to do a project for a while. I made the decision just on what I thought was best for for me to do an EP rather than an album and try and like really. I, di I didn't want to go as as long with it. Um, and so Pineapple Poetry for me, it started out as something that was actually going to have some tracks that Brian produced. It was a more, even more kind of poetic, jazzy, mm. subdued thing than it, than it came out to. In the end, what I decided was the real journey of that project was, sh and because it took so long, was trying to do something basically on my own yeah. so while i did speak with with brian and other people uh, like along the way and, and get advice and feedback um no i'm i mixed and mastered everything that was that was on that um the the and i produced everything on it with the exception of the last song still which was a mate from uh from uni so actually the very first live show i ever did it was this guy's band that i was opening for oh, nice. and we'd we'd stayed connected a bit and we're working on some more stuff together now he's he's had a couple songs since where he's done like some some pop projects and been like i was thinking of putting a rap here could you write something to this and i'll send him vocals and so you know i had this this idea for like one more track that i thought would be cool for the ep mm -hmm. and i was just like i literally had heard a like another artist song and i'm sure i can find it in the messages but i don't even remember what it was now yeah but it was just like a mood of like a silly kind of catchy riff and i was like i want to use a different instrument melody etc but i have a song concept it's about this thing yeah and i'm not quite sure how to create the right atmosphere for it do you want to do it and it, it, that was the song that ended up being called still the last song on the ep and it was one of the singles the two singles i did before the ep released and he hit me within a couple of days with this demo that had this really fun kazoo in it which of all instruments to choose and i didn't tell him specifically that but he he went with that as like this lead instrument and it it was perfect for like what i thought and so that was for me i was totally like a it didn't feel like a compromise at all in what mm -hmm. I wanted. And so I was like, I'm fine with this being like the one element of this project that I don't completely, yeah. you know, do do on my own. And that's how it came together. And I could still be really proud that I was like, that I made the instrumentals for the other four tracks and I mixed and mastered all of them uh, myself. And um, I had a, a, a friend, one thing that I, the only other thing that I hadn't done, which was already done like a year ahead of time almost, I just, hadn't got it was i had told a long time ago a friend back home in the u.s i went to high school with i'd seen on his instagram he was posting that he was learning how to paint and i was like hey mm. could i could i pay you a bit and like do you want to just try painting a watercolor pineapple and i it, it give me permission to like you know manipulate it however to turn it into cover art for this thing i'm thinking of doing mm. and so that's the other the other element that i didn't formulate was the original uh watercolor painting that became part of the the cover art mm -hmm. uh but yeah that's kind of how it came together and and because of the time period it was being written in the song topics um there was a lot about uh aging and isolation yeah. and um some parts of it were about how that relates to um you know the music dream there's a song called area codes that's very much touches on trying to reinvent yourself by going new places which yeah, we, you I, know I just, we've kind of touched on some stuff about that when i think area cuts i just think of the one with nate dog you know that i got oh yeah 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 <laughs> Classic, yeah definitely but... a different mood uh yeah. in this in this one but um yeah man I, I it was just kind of a it was cool it ended up taking longer than i thought it would and yeah. it wasn't what when i first thought of that name of a project this was like literally maybe close to two years ago and it or at least a year and a half and it, it it was very different um but i was really happy that i think it kind of like grew into exactly what it needed to be yeah. um so yeah I, I, I don't know i was i've been really really happy with uh with that project overall and it's been one of the cool things about that project which i think um i don't know how you feel about it but i think 
you would probably think this is a good sign is if you release an EP or a multi-track project, it's cool to hear that almost everyone has a different favorite song yes, that's from it. always good. You know, like, I there's know one song called um, Thought Casket that's a very bare-bones beat with, like, a, a whistle in it and stuff, and it's almost like spoken word, and it's like a rant. And it, it's so not like the other tracks, and almost it's it's borderline not hip hop. It is rapping, but it's a, it it's like a poetry track kind of. Mm. And the focus isn't on the beat or having a lot of bounce or anything. And it almost didn't make it on to the EP. Mm. And it was so cool to hear from people, some of which are like my biggest fans that have bought merch and are in lots of my streams and stuff like that, sending me like. Th this song was amazing like i yeah. like i could every word was so cool but you know and like that was awesome so it was cool i i can now say that i have gotten unsolicited messages at least once or twice about every track being someone's like favorite that's... or the one they think is the most catchy and that's awesome to me that's like mission mm -hmm. accomplished i think that's it's always... like you pick the right ones there's always a fear that if you put out a project i think i don't know what would be worse everybody saying that one yeah. track's the greatest right or everyone being like, I love the EP, but track four. That, that like would be yeah, that one. <laughs> that be like, shouldn't have been oh, in it. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, that mm. would be bad. I mean, True. True. I, feel, I feel you completely. You know, in my EP, it was exactly the same. Like, I think every yeah. single track was, you know, had different fans. You know, I think there are still tracks mm. that are people's, you know, favorites overall. Yeah, yeah. There's still more that people gravitate towards, but yeah yeah because um, like, it's cool to feel like none of your none of your children were left behind they were yeah. left completely out in the cold right yeah every you know everyone's like the chill all the children have got opportunities because mm -hmm. obviously both me and you brought out loads of singles like i remember back yep. um last last year you last know, like, year when it yeah this this, this yeah. It's all the singles over summer and uh that's, yes we had a collab yeah. important that came out then as mm -hmm. well which is yeah. um an amazing track actually um, i love i love that i love that song and that was one of the songs in the midst of that like 10 singles in 10 weeks or whatever the hell I was doing yeah. was like that was one of the ones where I think when you do like a blitz like that you're gonna have these which is good mm. but also a little bit sad where it's like okay you're in the midst of so many oh that track probably could have used more attention in the promo side of things like maybe yeah. had more potential you know what I mean like you're like ah, that was a you know that was a good song because that's still like uh that's a, sometimes I play like my, you know, my backlog during my, like the 10 minutes I have my stream starting screen up or something on Twitch. Yeah. And that's, again, that's one of the songs where sometimes it comes on and, and people will like comment on like, oh, which is this one? Or like, oh, this is yeah. so smooth, blah, blah, that's blah. Good. And yeah. like, it, yeah, it's a nice track. I just feel like yeah. cause that was the second collab we did. I actually um, yeah. forget the name of the first one, um, but... To I was honest, thinking about this. I was thinking about this earlier. Actually, the <laughs> same thing. I was like, I know that's not our first collab. Yeah, but we that's we, the one we had one for anyone. Mind. For anyone yeah. sort of not realizing, I actually forget the name of it. But we do have like a yeah. secret like collab on the uh, the bread remix EP. Um, yes, which it was. It was the song. The song's an alright song. I think it just. I don't know. I feel like that first track. It wasn't special, and that's no reflection of mm. you. That's no reflection of me. Yeah. That's no reflection of the guy who produced it. Um, yeah. but important I think just came together so well like, I remember yeah. this was back when because for those guys who don't know that important was originally my song and mm -hmm. um, I made this back when I was just making loads of songs during lockdown and I was just, it was just on a couple of playlists I had and I think I might have sent them over to you um, of just unreleased songs just to see what you thought yeah. and yeah. obviously this track stood out and I'm just like well, you know, do you want to do something with it? Like, oh yeah, no, you were yeah. asking for beats, and I think a few people right. said they liked the track because they loved the beat, and um, it's like kind of ethereal and it's it's quite a vibe. And I just yeah. sent it to yeah. you. I thought, is this something you want to do with it? And you're like, yeah, no, I'll give it a go. And I sent you the beat by itself, and you know, mm. a version with my vocals on, and you you kept my vocals, and you just tied it all yeah. in really nice. It's like a call and response, and you got that like Mac Miller hook. And then my sort of bridge yes. afterwards, which was the original hook. So it came together really good. I mean, my mum loves. The yeah, that's a well, that's so. one of my favorite. Like, uh, like I said, like no nothing gets anyone else. And I've got so many songs now and ones coming that like I'm I'm excited about. But that's one of the like uh, one of the one of those collabs definitely that for me sticks out is like mm. everything meshing together exactly if it 
as as if it sounds like that was everyone's intention from the beginning, even yeah. though it came together in a different way. Yeah, I feel yeah. Like one of the days you got to perform it live as well. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be, That'd be dope. Yeah, one of these days. But yeah, nah, again, props to you. Like, like again, you're Get you over to a rap like Stockholm. Once. Yeah, get Start them up again. Flights overseas, like, but, um, yeah. Yeah, nah, like I say, again, you were saying about the collabs. This is one of, this track, important, is probably, like, I've done a lot of collabs, especially now with mm. Fiverr as well. It's one of the few that I, like, yeah. really enjoy and I would have happily released myself. Yeah. So, you know, props to you for that as well. So, mm. cool. Good shit. So yeah, before before we wrap up though, I just want to know a quick mm-hmm. sort of um, plan for the future. What what we got for the future? Future for me, um, mm-hmm. I think you know realistically, one of the things that's been really like I talked a little bit earlier about like oh I don't want to be a streamer who also raps and like mm-hmm. a, my identity is a music artist and stuff. I think I've felt a, as much as you okay, you're inside all the time. You have the opportunity to be very productive with music and things. But I think even so, I've felt my, like, kind of identity and sometimes even drive. Like, I don't want to say it, sometimes say it publicly, but even just, like, my, like, conviction in, like, oh, this is what I want to be spending the vast majority of my time on or, like, this is it has waned a little bit. And I think a big part of that, honestly, is that one of my absolute favorite... um parts of being a music artist is the live performances and having that just completely gone into a vacuum over the last year and a half Mm. you know it puts even more focus on not maybe parts that you don't like but maybe aren't as exciting or that don't ever get you to the payoff of like you spend all this time making and promoting Mm. a song and you don't get to perform it. Or you don't get to show it off with like real people and their reactions in in real time and stuff. So for me, the kind of future looks like, um, I think realistically things are starting to happen. Mm. But I think like late autumn and then through into the winter is really when I will mm. be focusing on trying to book things again and, and get back out. Um, so that's that's a big thing. I will have one more virtual concert at least between now and then. Uh, I think I'm going to do one where I perform the EP straight through and maybe a couple extra tracks or something like that. Mm. Um, because last year I did a virtual concert that ended up being really fun that was um, good. on that Twitch. Was good, yeah. So that was a good time. And um, so so that's that's on the agenda. No new project projects for a while mm. for me. I'm, I'm, I'm back to, to singles. Uh, when I have a concept that I want to develop into a project, I will. But it's just, I think, a good strategy to mm. to give some focus to each song as it as it comes right now. I'm working on something where I basically sampled the guitar from uh, Skinny Love, and um, so I'm gonna have a mate basically replay it and do stuff as a cover so that <laughs> it's not copyrighted yeah, and yeah. I can release it for real uh, with nice. that sample, quote quote, and. Um, yeah, so I, th- I think it's singles from here on out. For me, it's... I think also the future is... Um, there's some focus for me right now on things that are not music. And I don't mean, like, other ambitions or hobbies, but I just mean, like, my own, like, health habits, yeah. scheduling. I've been focusing on, like being out making sure i get fresh air out day every day yeah. outside because it's easy to sit inside all day and be like i'm gonna make music until it's time to stream until it's time to play video games and i'm gonna go to bed and do it again tomorrow yeah and you know so uh, i've been getting out and going for for uh, you know a lot more walks i've been um you know focusing on having other types of, of exercise each day apartment like my girlfriend is is such a just rock star for putting up with me and like believing in me you know she she works really hard and so you know just keeping things you know tidy in the apartment and helping like do things that she doesn't expect and and um so yeah i mean those are kind of focuses for for me right now and i i also think it's a perfect time for me to build those habits because i think realistically it's still a few months off before i'm in full like oh i want to be rehearsing and doing as many shows as as possible so what better time now than to kind of um you know get 
get some of those things ingrained in in how I operate day to day. So that's that's mostly what I'm working on. Beautiful. Oh, great. It's been great to have you on after you interviewed yeah, me man. the first time. It's good to sort yes. of change the roles over. So we'll probably yeah. leave it there. So thanks to everyone who's been uh, listening as well. And we'll leave it there.